Andy, first of all, um, I remember you saying a very long time back about don't get too high with the wins, don't get too low with the defeats. I suppose that's the that's got to be the mantra now, hasn't it? You, you've you've had a, a, a rare defeat. You've got to keep on an even keel and, and just go again. Yeah, we've reviewed the game um, as a whole group this morning uh, with honesty, with accountability, and yeah, we, we treat every game the same, whether we've won, drawn or lost. We, we look back at the game. I looked at it yesterday. Um, as I said to you after the game, feel delighted with with large, large periods of that game in possession. I thought we were the dominant force. Uh, we, we pushed Burton back. Um, we, we kept possession. We kept probing. We created more chances than we have done in previous games. Their goalkeeper had a really good night. Um, unfortunately, we, we made some defensive errors, which say we, we were accountable for individually and collectively. But we'll, we'll look at it, we'll learn from it, and we'll approach the next game in exactly the same manner. Managers talk about responses and what they want to see from players. What do you want to see from, from your players, both in training and on Saturday? I want them to be consistent in what they're doing and I want them to learn from the mistakes uh, and continue to, to grow and develop and, and listen to the information we're giving them. Um, Tuesday night's game from an opposition point of view was a really good um, way for us to learn from our next two opponents um, and, and things that we have to get better at, certainly without the ball, uh, to, to manage those periods in the game. But with the ball, I think the last two performances, are, we, we're becoming the team that we want to be, we want to dominate the ball, we want to be really in, intense and aggressive without the ball to turn the ball all the back quickly. And we want to make teams work and defend um, the, their, their defensive third. All those traits you talked about pre-season and, and what you wanted to see, are you seeing those come to fruition now? I've taken from what you've just said, that the, the, the hints of it are there now and, and you're growing as a group, aren't you? Yeah, there's certain principles that we want to we want to use in every single game. Now, the, the formation for me is ir irrelevant. It's about the things that we want to do, the principles with and without the ball, uh, and we're making progress. And players are, are taking that message on put on board, and it's becoming more natural to them. Um, you know, wide centre backs who've not perhaps been here before have been asked to do different things. So they're taking that information on board. They're, they're becoming an attacking threat. They don't have to recover to become a, a wide centre back again when we're dominating the ball. So yeah, things we're, we're, we're really pleased with where we've got to after after eight league games and, and three cup games. Um, we, we've made really good progress. We, we're, we're still in the infancy, um, but we're, we're delighted where we're currently at. I won't say are you surprised, but with the with the amount of games that you've had, the points tally that you've had, are you maybe further ahead of where you thought you might be at this stage? Um. Forgetting the points, I think it's, it's the process of how you collect points and how, how you need to collect points consistently. And I think if you perform consistently, you've got a better chance of winning games. I think if you become a, a, a team and a group who play more random football, let's say, sometimes you, you come down on, on the right line of it and sometimes you don't. And you would say that some of the wins we've had this season, we've maybe not not being the, the team who should have got the three points, maybe a draw would have been a better result. So we've come down on the, on the right line. But I see the group growing. I, I see the, the, the team becoming better, more effective um, with, with the ball and, and become everything that, that I hope we will be and, and continue to get better at. You mentioned the defence there. Just to talk more broadly <coughs> about them, you, you've had a few different combinations. You've changed things around. What do you want from, from the, the, the three or the four or whoever you pick from when you put them out there on the pitch? Because they've all tended to got different qualities. So what are you looking for from all of them when you put them out there? Our defending starts around number nine and, and, and always will do. Every single player on our team has got defensive responsibilities. Um, we, we want to be a high intensity, high, high aggressive team uh, to, to regain the ball. We want to counter press really well. And if all those things don't work, we're going to have to defend our box. And for, for large periods of lots of games this season, we've done that really, really well. So it's just important that people um, do their roles within the within the group, within the team, and what they're there for. Uh, and, and if we do that, we'll, we'll be a better group. There's a degree of versatility in there as well, isn't it? Because obviously Nathan's played in the middle and on the right. Now you've got Kofi back as well. Connor Grant moved in to, to the defence uh, on Tuesday. So... Is, there a, is the versatility a lot to do with it, with, particularly with that group as well, that they are capable of doing different jobs depending on what you want from them? Yeah, and depending on what the opposition are doing as well. I think now with, with Burton playing 6-3-1 without the ball, it, our wide centre-backs were, were always the outlet. Uh, and we spoke at half-time about then once it gets boxed up on one side, double switch, and the space will be created on the other side of the pitch. So, yeah, they have to be capable of doing different things in against different formations, against different teams who've got different strengths. So we'll keep looking at it uh, and keep trying to improve every single one of them.
Nathan as the captain has, has got a really important role this year. How have you seen his game maybe, I won't say mature, but how have you seen that maybe change? Or uh, uh, He's got to effectively be your leader on the pitch, hasn't he? So have you, what changes, if anything, have you seen in Nathan to, to show that you know the captaincy is, is really helping him and he's helping that group of players together with him? Um, well, I think on the pitch, he's one of the leaders on the pitch. It's not his, his sole responsibility um, on the pitch. We've obviously got funds playing 10 yards in front of him. We've got other people within the group who, who have to lead uh, in, in a variety of ways. You have to ask Nathan if it's affected him, changed him in any, any way. I, I don't see it. I see someone who's out there every single day trying to get better and is improving in every aspect. I see someone who's who wants to defend... Um, wholeheartedly uh, and upset opponents uh, and yeah we, we want to again keep him keep him improving keep him developing and, and, and get everything out of them we possibly can do um, just on the finally on the subject of defence new defender in the building earlier uh, this week and Jesse Deborah um, tell us a bit about him because we've not spoke to you about him yet about what, what you've seen in him what he will bring to the squad and, and how you see him developing as part of the group yeah I think Jesse's um, journey to here has been slightly different coming through at Millwall in, in a different position uh, and then someone at Millwall recognising the quality he's got and, and him moving back to, to play centre back so he's had some experience at, at Halifax in, in the conference uh, and been performing really really well over a, a couple of seasons there's obviously been interested in before uh, and a couple of things have fell through uh, from, from teams in our league and higher up as well um, he obviously became out of contract in the, in the summer um, but but was was injured uh, with with a with a hamstring injury. Um, so I like to think that it's congratulations to to Dave and the recruitment team that that we've managed to take advantage of that. He, he's been in in the group now for a month or so, doing his final stage of rehab, uh, and and the medical team have got him back fit, and his his application to get back fit has been really good. As a person, what what a guy, what a great personality, really humble lad, really honest and respectful. You know, he's, he's a credit to himself and his family, and he and he brings different qualities to to our group. Um, extremely quick, extremely strong, uh, and wants to get better and needs a platform now to, to go and play. I was going to say I've seen I've seen pictures of him and he's massive. He's really really big. But what, you've just mentioned there is pace. What what is he like as a player? What can people expect to see from him when he eventually does? Well, I'm not sure what pictures you've seen, Phil. <laughs> But yeah, he's a, he's a big guy. Um, he is quick, extremely. Um, but that's only a couple of things he's really good at. Okay. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Um, in, in terms of, of where you might see his development, though, um, obviously, like you say, he's, he's got to work on his fitness a little bit and everything. So, is, is he maybe one who's going to sit around the first team a bit? Is he is, is he going to be more of a, a longer term solution? How do you see him fitting in at the time? Again, as I've mentioned a few times, we want to develop his game. We want to make him better. Um, he's obviously had no game time with anyone this this season, but he's now training every every day, doing the full sessions with the group. His fitness is growing. His fitness is developing, and as soon as he's ready to be involved in the first team, he then becomes another option. Uh, just looking more broadly, uh, uh, the the bunch of games you've got coming up, and you know we, we've talked a lot about making sure the players are, are ready at certain times. Has it been hard? particularly this season because of the number of games you've had in such a short space of time and the number of games you've got coming up as well. That's got to be a real test for you, for the medical team, for the conditioning team, because the schedule has been pretty hectic for what the first seven or eight weeks of the season is only yeah. going to get more busy. Yeah, I think certain things have to be consistent. Our communication has to be really good. How we work together uh, within each department has to be really good from, from myself, Leading it through the coaching department, the medical department, S and C, we we have meeting upon meeting about different things, um, different players, different players with with different history, what what some players are capable of and what other players are capable of, and then ultimately I have to make a decision to pick a team um, without the hindsight hindsight of the result. Um, so that's what I'll continue to do. Uh, I'll continue to use the group uh, as and when I, I see fit, uh, and we'll keep moving forward together. The advantage, of course, has been you getting through in the cup. So that's meant more games, and hmm. there's a real big carrot at the end of Tuesday, I suppose, isn't there? Because you, you could end up being in the fourth round for the first time since, what, 2006? There's the opportunity for Premier League opposition there as well. You've got, you've got to, I know you've got to get past the game, but it must, it's a really good character to aim for, isn't it? 
Yeah, well, as I said in the last round, Cambridge is our priority. We, we've not spoken uh, about Sutton as of yet. That that will start after we've played Saturday's game. But but looking ahead slightly, it's a really difficult game for us, and, and we've played Sutton before in, in League Two, and I think their their journey from non-league is, is is credit to them all. It's credit to Matt, where, where he's currently got the club uh, into league football. It's, I would imagine it's a really big step up from from the conference, and, and they wouldn't have stepped up with the biggest budget. I wouldn't have imagined, uh, and, they, and they did really well um, in the season we were in League Two, and they were competitive right till the end of end of the season. So, yeah, it's a difficult game, but until we play Cambridge, we, we won't even be thinking about something. How do you prepare for cup games any differently than league games? Is there a different vibe about them at all? Because you know it's a one off, no. anything like that. Nothing apart from penalties. Nothing apart, from, and you're not no. bad at those either. Touch wood. Thank you.